This session, we are going to have three talks of 25 minutes overall. So the, it will, you will have 20 minutes for your talk and about five minutes for the question. And at the end of this session, we'll have a 30 minute discussion where all the panelists will be, will have the possibility yeah. to answer question from the audience. Um, right now, we will start with, it'll be five you minutes the, late. You see the plot? But we are going to start with the first uh, talk from uh, Obina Abba from Queen's University, Belfast. And he's going to talk about quantum thermodynamics and quantum control. So, Obina, you can please share your screen. Um, and I will let you know five minutes before the end of your talk um, about the remaining time you have. So, whenever you are ready, please start. Is the screen full now? Uh, yeah, yeah. Be... You have to put it in full screen mode. I guess. Okay, perfect. Just don't see you. Okay, is okay? We we can see your. You should share only the application. Stop sharing and relaunch the application. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, the organizers, and uh, thank you for the uh, invitation to present part of my current uh, research in the subject of quantum thermodynamics and quantum control. So today I'll try to give uh, you a brief overview of what I've been doing in recent past. And then I will start first by trying to give a brief motivation. Yeah, why we're interested in this kind of uh, subjects. And then uh, I'll make a, a brief reminder on four stroke or to refrigerator, you yeah, are trying to yeah, motivate what we already know from your yeah, first uh, or yeah, third year thermal physics. And then I'll try to now bring up the idea when we have control in the system, can we generate a better performance or not? And also I'll give you a second application of this kind of uh, quantum control called shortcut to adiabacity. So if we look over the years, the technology have done, gone quite remarkable in downscaling sizes of our electronic devices. For instance, we are all having smartphone or tablets and this in the seventies used to be huge mainframe devices. But in principle, all these are limited or the challenges being faced by every of these electronic devices and our laptop is mainly how best can we manage the heat and as well as increasing the processing speed. And the same vein, people have been trying to minimize these engines up to down and it was only in 2016 with the group of Ferdinand Keller, Schmidt Keller in a mines that were able to downscale a functional heat engine or to single atom regime. So on the last year, a group in Brazil, and this here, this is the NMR experiment where they show that you can actually realize a, an auto in a quantum heat engine by having an RFA which pumps some heat into the code but by doing some work. This is a, just a sure proof of principle experiment and they're able to show that, yeah, they can get efficiency up to around 0.44%. And if we look, yeah, uh, no, 44%. And if we look here, you see that they have to be some time limit which must be exceeded before you, the engine can actually perform a useful work. And the implication of 
what these can be used are quite enormous and one can think several of applications, for instance, in quantum computers or sensors, and uh, also in a number of places like uh, nanotechnological application. So let's uh, look what is actually a refrigerator. So it's basically any device which performs some work, uh, which uh, you extract some heat from a cold bath to a hot bath, and then in the process of adding some work. And the kernel efficiency tells you the duration of the input heat upon the output is given by this is given by these temperature ratios. But the, one of the problem is that although it's maximum performance, it is actually slow. But for a real engine, things happen in finite time and this actually leads to dissipation. And one way to characterize this is always what people regard as coefficients of performance at maximum figure of merit. So depending on what you choose as your figure of merit. So, and then if we take that, the performance and then as well as the cooling power at a finite time, then we'll have a expression that depends on the ratio of the temperature. Then let's say look now on the, if we look at four stroke engine, we can just think about our thermodynamic yeah, subject, uh, you have a piston and a gas, you compress it, you do some work, and then you shine some laser, which exchange heat. So, and then add some energy, and then you can push the piston back and then put it in contact with a cold bath. And then this is a typical engine cycle. And if we perform the analysis like this, for instance, using a quantum framework, yeah, in a weak coupling limit, we can actually do the same. So like you have a, an ion trap, then you modulate your frequency and then you couple shine some laser lights and uh, you modulate backward. And here during the change of the frequency or the size of the trap, then you, there is a Q star here, which tells you how fast or how slow you do this adiabatic uh, process. So we can compute the performance exact in this scenario, and that is given by this expression here, where this Q star tell you how fast or slow you drive the process. And when the Q star one and two is the, are equal to one, that means that the process is quite very slow. That's the adiabatic regime. And in this regime, then the performance of the refrigerator is characterized by the ratio of the efficiency, uh, the ratio of the frequencies. And then if it's greater than one, the performance is always less than what you obtain for the adiabatic scenario. And let's look at the plot here. You can see the blue line is the efficiency, uh, the coefficient of performance at the maximum figure of merit. And then the dotted, that line is the cannot uh, the cannot coefficient of performance that's the maximum you can achieve at zero power and the red and the green ones this is when you now start to yeah in, drive this in a finite time so you have some non adiabatic effect and then you see that the efficiency or the performance reduces so then the question is is there any way we can actually improve this performance of this engine in a finite time? So we need to take some control. And why would you do, uh, why do you need this? It's not only an application that is necessary for thermodynamic engine, but it has been quite useful in other areas of yeah, modern physics, critical, systems and then a metrological protocol and then also circumventing the coherence in a system. So let's say consider one of the known way of doing this, which is called shortcut to adiabaticity. And this is basically when you just a kind of uh, slow down a fast motion video. So you start a process, uh, you start a, a process, for instance, you look at the plot, then we want to end 
at the same point where it will end in adiabatic situation without minding what happens in between. And then if we look at the first uh, question here, then what it tells you is that we need to construct additional Hamiltonia, which will suppress the non-adiabatic non transition during the driving protocol. And by giving some bounds that your frequency need to fulfill, then we can actually construct yeah, this kind of protocol for be it two level system harmonic oscillator. For the case of harmonic oscillator, then we can actually have expression that looks in this form as our additional Hamiltonia that if we put it with the original Hamiltonia, it will ensure that we suppress the adiabatic, yeah, the non-adiabatic contributions. However, the question now becomes what about the cost of this additional Hamiltonia and how do we see it? So one way to look at it is like, for instance, uh, if I now consider some instantaneous power analysis and do this, then this tells me that maybe if I'm looking between around two and uh, eight, it will appear as if I'm not really yeah, doing any work. Or uh, maybe I look 2.5 and then eight points around 9.5 or so then. But if I want to know my actual power, I have to compute what we call in electricity, the average power. And if I take this analogy and then apply it here, I can actually compute what I have a definition for the cost of my driving. And then this mean the cost is actually also in the same form, which we use to characterize our be it refrigerator and other thermal devices. And then if we compare this with what we call the non-adiabatic work, then we see that this in a very short time, the blue, uh, the red line is greater than the gray, which is the non-adiabatic work, that's the friction. So in a very short time, it is actually very huge cost to perform this kind of a uh, shortcut uh, protocol, but there is actually a good range of time where you see that it's quite lower than the work friction. So if we now come back to the analysis of our refrigerators, and then uh, we put the cost in the definition of the performance. So we can then compute yeah, the cooling power yeah, in this form, and then the dotted black line is the adiabatic situation. Then the red is the shortcut protocol. And the blue one is the non-adiabatic situation. And you can see actually that in a very short time that it doesn't, you doesn't gain anything by doing the shortcut protocol. But between the intermediate, huge intermediate region, then you actually have a reasonable advantage. And for the cooling power, then this, you also have advantage than the, doing the non-adiabatic protocol. And the further analysis on this is looking at the figure of merit we choose. And we see here that for that figure of merit that you can actually have an hierarchy which tells you that although the shortcut protocol is lower than the adiabatic situation, it is always greater than the non-adiabatic situation provided that you are above the region where this time is greater than the time where the cost of doing the shortcut is greater than the costs of the friction. So that tells us that we can simultaneously enhance both coefficients of performance and the cooling power. Then we now look, uh, yeah, the green plots here, we look, since we are talking about time and the quantum uh, mechanics tells us that there is limit to the speed of evolution of a system, you know, which is usually called the quantum speed limit. So we can use now this framework also to try to get a kind of a, a tighter bound on 
the performance of our uh, shortcut pro uh, protocol. And if we use this expression uh, due to Anadan and the Aranov, uh, Aranov, the bus angle, the ratio of the bus angle between the density operators and then uh, the with the mean energy of the associated with the shortcut. So we can actually get a, a bound based on the quantum speed limit and that's the green plot here. And we see that this is always yeah, higher than the STA and likewise also when you look for the costs, uh, no, the cooling power. So more information on this, you can see on this uh, yeah, article, yeah, recent article here with uh, Mauro Paternostro and then uh, Eric Lins. Then the next uh, part of the talk, or uh, next, ap next application of the STI I want to yeah, present to you is like, uh, yeah, we consider one of the system, you yeah, have two system we know in uh, physics are uh, basically the harmonic oscillator and then two level system. And for these two level system, what happens when we bring two of them together? And this is quite relevant for range of experimental platform, be it circuit cavity, QED like found in the mass plank and the other places around the world. And then also like the superconducting or circuit QED. And then this you also- You have five more minutes, Sabina. Yeah, fine. Okay. So, and then uh, as well as uh, yeah, the linear ion trap. So, and this is well described by well-known James Cummings model. So where this is the, describe your harmonic, uh, harmonic oscillator, then this is the two level system and the coupling between the two. And uh, this can be, have a transition yeah, between the state different levels and uh, at resonance, you can actually complete, complete a perfect transfer from yeah, one, yeah, ground states, N plus one to the end of the excited state at some time, but this is not possible for all N at the same time. So what can we do with this then? What we set out to do was to generate a non-classical state using this kind of framework, combining it with this shortcut protocol. And one way to go about this is like, first we know that we can map this to a landau zener problem form where you have something that look like your sigma X, Z, and then sigma X, where these are the spin operators. And then with this in mind, construct the shortcut to adiabatistic protocol and that you can do population transfer in a finite time. And if we now use this framework, we can actually construct different kind of uh, non-classical states. Let me just give you example of one of them here. So, which is like one known and important one called the Schrodinger cat states. So the idea is that we start with a fork state, then we make a pi over half, uh, pi over two pos and then you perform the STA protocol and we can concatenate this into many times. And uh, after that, then we make a, a measurement. So if we do this, then you measure the system. Let's say we start here. Yeah. For instance, uh, we want to go from this to this, yeah, zero plus uh, two states. Then we'll see that we actually have the state at a very high fidelity. Why if we do this with time independent protocol, we get 0 0.08. So this scheme offer large improvements on the fidelity. So in conclusion, I have uh, tried to show you yeah, the refrigerator efficiency can be better if we do shortcut protocol. And then I show you that Quantum speed limit also impose some bounds on performance of quantum machines and cooling is not always equal to power. So it's always good to look at the overall, perf overall performance because of whenever you do this kind of 
a shortcut protocol. And then the last I also show you that we can combine the shortcut protocol and James Cummings, uh, Cummings model to generate non-classical state. And this is quite robust against noise and many imperfect pulses as we study. So with this, uh, yeah, you can see more on the reference here yeah, about this uh, to work, the okay, main one is this on the refrigerators, yeah, published in the fiscal review research. And for the parts on the state engineering, that's uh, the CAPRL, yeah, with uh, yeah, Ricardo Pabla and uh, Mauro Paternastro. So, with that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Obina, for this nice talk. Anyway, within the time limit. Thank you for that. Now, if there are any questions, I've seen uh, on the chat that Ali has a question. If he can unmute yes. himself. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Obina, for this uh, excellent talk. I have uh, two questions. The first one is, uh, in one of the slides, you show uh, a theory for the auto uh, cycle for a quantum harmonic oscillator. Is uh, what changes in harmonicities? Now. Number two is uh, in before that you uh, a way to extract uh, let's say the amount of dissipation for uh, for a thermodynamic system. But how much do these results change when you go down to you know smaller scales? Okay. If I understand, yeah, the first just I cannot yeah really go back. Okay, yeah, the first one is uh, about the cycle of the auto. This one, yeah. yeah. So here, what's here is the system is closed, yeah, in the first part of the protocol. Uh -huh. So, yeah, and then uh, for this particular situation, we are considering, yeah, so this is just a kind of a unitary evolution. So when you couple with the lights, so uh -huh. it's like, this is the quantum harmonic oscillator. Yeah, the quantum harmonic oscillator. Yeah, in this case. So, but it, uh, I guess my question is, if you had n harmonicities. Yes. Let's say if it was not harmonic, uh -huh. how would this change? You, if for uh, what would change, basically, yeah, you have a, a higher energy in the system. Yeah, probably. And then, uh, yeah, what's another thing is uh, when you you do the the open side when you couple the reservoir. So depending if you are in weak coupling limit, so far uh, the study so far what uh, has been shown is that you have basically what still looks more or less like the linear one, except that now you have modification in your performance both at maximum power. So because you are putting more power and then this changes, yeah, the, um, how your performance at maximum figure of merit looks like. I see. Um, okay. So then uh, the second one is, uh, yeah, how the energy changes, yeah, for this small system. Yeah, in the experiment we are, we did the uh, 2006, yeah, with the uh, color, what we find is that when you scale, actually the energy, so the amount of energy being produced, yeah, by this, and then a kind of a try to scale in the sense that it, by dividing by considering the uh, per kilogram, so like you check the performance of a car, and then the performance of this kind of engine by the weight of the medium that's uh, performing the cycle, then this is just by a difference of uh, around 10 yeah, between the two. So if you, you check it just by the, yeah. Okay. By the weight, yeah, efficiency per weight, mm -hmm. then there is no much difference yeah, okay. between the two. So okay, the only thanks. difference uh, yeah, we start, we can play around here is that maybe yeah, we can start to think about doing some, yeah, like uh, using some quantum uh, approach, uh, like using like squeeze lights, can we get more by doing this instead of just coupling, yeah, mm -hmm. ordinary thermal 
uh, reservoir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Abba. There's actually another question, but I will ask uh, Matura to hold that question and prepare it for the discussion session uh, slightly later. We want to try to be on schedule for the next talk of Estelle Inac. Uh, 